This is a PowerPoint using the XML DOM and reading the XML DOM documents into an HTML file. Here's some of the things that we'll be covering. First, I'll talk about what the DOM is. It's a document object model. And then we'll explore some uh, code examples using the DOM. One of those will be ex displaying XML data in a, in a browser, either IE or Firefox. And then I'll show you a bit of walking the tree. The DOM is built up of several um, nodes that are a binary tree, and I'll show you how to walk through those. Having the DOM, which basically takes the X XML file and puts it up in memory, allows developers to use embedded scripts and languages. You can use Java, JavaScript, VBScript, virtually any language to access both the HTML and the XML documents. In this demonstration, we're going to use JavaScript in a browser. First, let's take a look at how you can organize your XML data. Here's an invoice document, and you can see that we have a customer, an address, city, state, zip. Um, Homer Simpson likes donuts, so we have our donuts, 137 of them. We have a second product, beer, goes good with donuts. And we have 72, I'm pretty sure it's bottles of that. So that's our invoice. And you can see that we have an invoice, a customer node or element, and then the C data or the text data inside of it. And we do that for each, each of the pieces of data. This is kind of what the first person, when they're first learning XML, this is how they would lay out an XML document. And this is how it looks like. We have a singular relationship, so we have the invoice, which is the root, and then we have each of the nodes kind of building a tree off of that root. And each one is by itself, has its own data. Now here's a different way to look at XML, and that's using attributes. So we set up one identity, which one element, which is invoice, and then we put the, the repetitive data or the common data to the, to the document as attributes. So we set up customer, address, city, and state. And then we built a line item for each of the uh, items that we have. So we have a line item for donuts, a line item for beer, and a line item for peanuts. And you can see that by doing this line item node, we can add multiple line items for our customer Homer Simpson. And, and we also have our quantity taken care of in the line items. Now here's a diagram of the new relationships. So we have our invoice and then it repeats with the multiple line items. So there's two different really schools of thought on how to arrange your XML data. This works very well because of the repeating data. So if the data is repeating like an invoice item, this is a really good way to do it, as opposed to the first method we looked at. Now, the DOM is very similar to hierarchical databases. And you're probably familiar with Windows Explorer. That's also a hierarchical structure where you have a, a, a root and then it breaks down into folders, inside of folders, inside of folders. This is a tree model, and it makes it very easy for computers to move data and to display things. It's a, a, a looping process where the computer program will go down one branch of the tree, and then as it gets to the very end, then it'll back up to the next branch, go down that branch, back up, go back two branches, and it's a very f efficient way for a computer to work through lots of data. Now, here's what is commonly called the DBF snowflake or the database file snowflake. Each of these would be a table and we would have the customer table, invoice table, line items, and they would all be relationed to each other. 
We can see that our customer can have multiple invoices and each invoice could have multiple line items. Same thing, each customer would have an address, an address in the address table. They might have an, a correspondence file and inside that correspondence file there'd be a link to the correspondent file and the text. Each customer also might have certain preferences that you want to keep in a database. Now, the difference to the DBF model, which is relational, is the, DB, is the DBF tree. So here we have a customer, or this is a hierarchical tree. We have our customer, which is the root, and that breaks down to address, invoice, preferences, and correspondence. And then these have sub folders or sub data with correspondence tasks and correspondence to the correspondence element. And the invoice has multiple line items. So it's the same data, but it's arranged in a different format. Now, neither of these is right or wrong. It depends upon the data and how you're going to handle it. It just so happens that hierarchical data, like we just looked at, relates very well to XML. XML was built on the same model. So here you can still see our, our element layout, and you can see how that corresponds directly to an XML document. Notice that line items, where there will only be one item and not contain anything except maybe an attribute, then it's a single, single element. Something like invoice, which would contain other elements, has a start and stop invoice. Oh, and I see in there I missed a stop stop slash on the uh, on the invoice. So that's kind of the theory and the layout of XML. Go ahead, or go ahead and in a in a text editor, open up the file cd.xml. That's in your resources for this PowerPoint. And just take a minute, just pause this recording, and take a minute to draw a picture of the tree structure. Now, I'm going to have what I came up with on the next slide. But stop right now, draw out, look at the cd.xml file, and draw out how you think the tree structure is. Now, here's how I see the tree structure. There's the CD collection is the root. It contains child elements named CD, and each CD contains another child element named artist. It, the CD also contains C data or character data, which would be the text. In our case, this would be the album name. And the sub-element artist also contains C data, which is the, the name of the artist. Now again, this could have all been laid out as attributes, or there's many different ways that we could have laid out this data. But based on how this XML document is laid out, this would be the appropriate tree. Now, as you work with these things, here's the advantages of the DOM. First, it's all in memory. When the parser comes in, such as a browser or a parser such as Saxon comes in, it reads the entire XML document and puts it all up in memory. If it's a small document, this is a good thing. So that gives us the ability to walk the tree or really to jump to any of the nodes on the tree because it's all available in memory. It's also very easy to insert new records. And there's functions written in the DOM that allow you to do that. Wherever you are located in the DOM or in the tree structure, you can use a function to add in new data. Um, with Firefox 3.0, and IE has had it for several years, I think since IE 5, the DOM is built into the browsers. And the DOM is now part of the W3C standards. But all is not bright and rosy in the DOM land. One of the big discrepancies, and you'll notice this as you work, although we've smoothed it out a little bit in our example code, but IE, Internet Explorer, Mozilla, Firefox handle the DOM differently, so you have to write different code. IE uses ActiveX, which is a programmatic special control 
um, that makes IE pretty dangerous because people can write um, viruses and stuff using ActiveX. And Mozilla uses a, a, a different different technique. So whenever you write the DOM in your web pages, you have to write for both IE and for Mozilla or Firefox. The DOM is very memory intensive. You need four or five times more room than the actual XML doc is. So if you're like a phone company that stores all your records for the daily phone calls that your customers make in an XML document. This could be several megs, maybe even a couple gig in size. So you would need four times that much memory to contain all of that. And if you can't contain it all, then the program crashes. I mean, it's you either fit in your memory or you don't. This shows that multi-megabyte files, such as phone records, can become a real bottleneck. The alternative is to use SACS, which we'll, we'll show you in another module. That stands for Simple API for XML. Also, you'll find that XXLT, the styling language for XML, is much more efficient for walking the nodes of the XML document. The way XPath works with XSLT makes it a real simple process to walk through the tree as opposed to using JavaScript and the other programming languages. It can be very tedious doing loops inside of loops inside of loops for each child element. But we'll see more on that later. So let's have some fun. Let's get out our XML document and display the information in the browser. Now, with IE, we're going to use a thing called the DSO, which is a data source object. And Firefox has a different uh, utility built in. To start with, let's just test your browser out, make sure everything is working right, and use the file testdom.html along with the cd.xml. Now, the way these web pages are written, cd.xml has to be in the same folder as your HTML file. And if you run this in either Internet Explorer or Firefox, you'll see that it will print it out. It will show you the root, which in our case is CD collection. And you can see it works in both. The root pops up in an alert box. And this is using JavaScript. Once we get the connection to the file, and you can go into the HTML file to see how that's done, but once you get that, this is the key piece. Once we connected with the XML document, we saved that handle or that, that, that pointer to the DOM in memory as XML doc. So we take that pointer pointing to the DOM in memory, and we say XML doc, look at our document element, and look at the node name of that, which is a, sh a long way of saying, show us the root. Now, just knowing the root of our document isn't going to be very helpful. So we're going to walk the tree. We're going to go down each of our elements through the XML document and display their contents. And if you open up walkthetree1.html and the CD XML, you, you'll see where we connect to the XML document and display the information. Now, notice on the show XML function on line 48, that's where we first showed the alert box that showed our root. And I've commented that out. And then on line 49, this is where we really get down to getting the data. And we take our XML doc, which is our pointer to the DOM in memory, and we use the get elements by tag name, and we tell it to look for all the CDs. Now what get elements by tag name does is it creates an array. And you can see on line 49 that I called it array CD. It's nice to put that array in front of it so you're always aware that you're working with a list of things. 
So we're going to loop through this list of CDs. Now, because I'm outputting data to the web page, I'm putting this in a C data section so my validator ignores this piece of code and doesn't throw XHTML validation errors. I also put comment lines in front of my C data, my open and close C data on line 51 and 57. So the Firebug doesn't say that there's an error in here because Firebug doesn't like the C data. All right, so here's the meat of the matter. We go to line 52, and we're, we're going to walk through the array CD. So it's our list of CDs. So we start our counter at 0, and we're going to go for as many as there are. So if there's 6 or 60 CDs, the, the array CD.length is going to have that number. And then our x++ is our incrementer. So for each CD in our list, our array CD list, we're going to do a document write, and we're going to print out our array CD at position x, or right now it's 0. And we're going to look at the first child and the node value. So our first child is going to be the contents, or the name of the album, and the node value is going to display that C data text. So here's a close up of the key element. It's XML doc get elements by tag name. Remember, as, as you work with JavaScript, that it is case sensitive. So th these functions are case sensitive. And then here we output for each of the arrays, we output the uh, the first child node value, which will give us the album names. If you're unsure of this, go back and look at the cd.xml and say to yourself, what is this loop going to print out? Now, when you do this, you should have a screen showing all the albums. Next, we want to say, well, we want to show the artist too, which is a sub-element of CD. So here's how to do that. We're going to walk the tree to.html, that's your second file, and use again cdxml. This is our same loop, so we're going to loop through our CD array length, and we're going to do a document write and notice I put it in bold, so we're going to print the album name in bold, and then I did a stop bold. And then we're going to get the artist's name. So to do that, I go to my current node, which is array CDX, and I get elements by tag name artist. Now, I know there's only one artist per album in my data, but we could do this also in a for loop if there was multiple artists or the possibility of multiple artists for each album. But I know there's only one, so I'm just going to say document write. I'm going to put my by, that's going to display on the screen, and then I'm going to say look at my array of artists, position zero, because I know there's only one. And again, we look at the first child node value, which will print out the contents of that artist node. Now, a very useful tool for doing all of this is Firebug. And there's several things that are nice to set up in Firebug. One is set breakpoints. So you can see here we're on line 58. I stopped the program where it was getting the artist element. Um, also, right above that, you can see where it's printed out Sweet Baby James, the album, by James Taylor. Now, this is before I put the bold in there. But you can see it's getting the album name and the artist's name. So it's working correctly. Over on the right-hand side, there's an option button in Firebug. And that allows you to show the DOM properties. This is very useful when we're working with the things we're working with with the DOM. And I put a green box showing some of the, some, a few of the properties of the DOM. And you can look across and you can see our first child is James Taylor and we're getting the node value from that. So load up Firebug, and you'll find it to be a very helpful tool, especially if you set breakpoints and walk through these a piece at a time.
So you should have a pretty good idea of what the XML DOM is. It's basically your XML file, your text file, up in memory, laid out in the computer's memory as a tree. I've shown you how to use the DOM, where you can connect to it to a file with a browser, and then display the different elements in, on the screen. And we took you all the way through and walked you through, or started walking you through, the tree. And that completes the PowerPoint on the XML DOM. My name is Peter Johnson.